So we are going to talk about vector fields, and to do that, we'll start by looking at an ordinary multivariable function. In this case, z equals xy plus x minus y. In this case, we have a function that takes two inputs, but gives us one number as an output. One way that we think about how multivariable functions change is using the gradient vector. The gradient of z is defined as the partial derivative of z with respect to x, and the partial with respect to y at a given input point. In this case, if we do those partial derivatives out, that's going to give us y plus 1 for the x value and x minus 1 for the y value. And the reason that I brought up the gradient vector is it's actually an example that we've already seen of a vector field. Now the idea of a vector field is that we take a point or a vector as an input, but we also return a vector as an output. In this case, the gradient of z, that value, is dependent on the values of x and y that we input into our function. And based on that input, that starting point, we get a vector as the result. And vector fields show up in a lot of places when we talk about applications to physics. For example, if we wanted to talk about the gravitational force exerted by a particle with a particular mass, then we could express that as a vector field because it's going to depend both in terms of magnitude and direction on the location we're at relative to the particle. In this example, we would have points very close to the mass with strong gravitational forces, vectors towards that mass, and points that are farther away would have weaker gravitational forces. And we represent the stronger forces with a longer vector and weaker forces with a shorter vector. It's important to be able to visualize vector fields on a 2D graph, so let's go through an example of how to do that for our particular function, the gradient of z, right here as a vector field. To do that, we have to take a look at some of the input values that we could put into our function. For example, the gradient of z evaluated at the point 1, 1 is going to give us our x value will be 1 plus 1, which is 2, and our y value will be 1 minus 1, which is 0. So at the point 1, 1, the output of our vector field is going to be 2, 0. Now I'm not going to draw this vector to scale, because when we look at a vector field, one of the important parts of visualizing that function is that we're able to look at what direction the vectors are pointing. In order to understand the direction, we have to plot a lot of points in the 2D plane. But once we start plotting a lot of points and all of the vectors are drawn to scale, they can start overlapping with each other and covering each other up. So it becomes difficult to actually understand the way that the vector field operates. We scale down those vectors so that we can see them all at the same time and get a better sense of direction. So let's look at a couple of other input values. If we took the gradient of z evaluated at 1, 2 instead, then we would see the x value is now 2 plus 1, which is 3. The y value is still going to be 0. So if we look at the input 1, 2, our x value is relatively larger. So even though we're still not drawing to scale, we will draw the vector 3, 0 as proportionally larger than the vector 2, 0. So here I've modeled the rest of the right half of that vector field of the gradient of z. And one thing you might also notice from the way that these arrows are pointing is that it kind of looks like this field could be describing the way that a fluid flows. If we talked about the vector field as being the velocity of a fluid at a particular point, we could think about following these arrows in the direction of that vector field and thinking about how for example, a stream of water might flow if this were its velocity vectors. A vector field that is a gradient of some function is called conservative, and conservative vector fields have some important properties when we start talking about line integrals. So those are the basics of vector fields. A vector field is any situation where we take a point x, y as an input, and we get a vector as an output. And we can visualize those vector fields by taking an x, y coordinate plane and mapping each of the points in that plane to its respective vector output to see where those arrows are pointing. 